Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. In this Edge TX video, I'm going to show you how to make a multi-position switch out of a trim switch. Position 4, position 3, position 2, position 1, position 4, position 3, position 4, position 1. Pretty cool, huh? All right, the idea in this video is to utilize the T5 and T6 switches for something other than trim, because a lot of us don't really use trim switches. I know quad guys don't use trim switches at all. And for fixed wing pilots that may have a standard four channel AETR setup, they probably only use aileron, elevator, and rudder. On, on my electric models, I don't even use throttle. So I've got a whole bunch of trim switches here that I can put to good use. One of the things I can do with these trim switches using a little bit of logic in the radio is to make a loop multi-position switch and it can be any number of positions we want I'm gonna show you how to do four and three but you could easily make it ten or twelve or six or whatever doesn't matter the logic is really easy all right so let me show you how this radio setup works we'll start out by clicking the model button and I'm gonna go over to the logical switches first and I've got a couple of logical switches in here but don't sweat it they're not that confusing we need to start out by creating two conditions that tell us when we've hit our top end and our bottom end. So I'm going to create a four position switch here and I'm starting with the number zero. So I have positions zero, 10, 20, and 30. Those are my four positions starting at zero. Okay. Once I go over 30, then I want to loop back to zero. So that's what logical one does. It creates a condition that says, Hey, when you go over the value of 30, we're going to, we're going to indicate and say that we're over a value of 30. Also notice I've got a little delay put in there. I use a delay of one. The only reason I did that is to allow the visuals so you can see what's happening on the radio when we go through this. So I'm just gonna click on edit here and I'll show you the setup. So I use function A is greater than X. My variable is global variable one. That's the global variable I'm gonna massage. We need that global variable, by the way. I'll explain that as we go along. And the value that we're looking at on the global variable is 30. So we're saying if GV1 hits 30, then logical one goes on. And also it has to be while the five up switch is pressed. Uh, the duration I used is one second. So what will happen here when I scoot out of that edit screen and I press five up, what will happen is this global variable one increases. There's two, there's three, here's four. Now it's gonna go above it. I'm gonna hit up again and it's gonna go above that. When that happens, logical one's gonna illuminate. See how one's on? There it was, just on for a second. And then the same thing happens going the other way. If we look, look at logical two, logical two is the same thing. We're looking at global variable one and when the value of GV1 goes below zero and the down switch is pressed, five down is pressed, I'm gonna use a duration of one and that illuminates logical two. So real simple, all I have to do is press five down and I'm already at zero. So when I press five down, logical two is gonna illuminate. See, L2 just went on for just a moment and you can see that an L3, four, five, and six, I have a logical switch following the condition of that global variable. So we'll go down, I'll press the down button, T5 down. Now we're at three and I'll press down again, we're at position two, I'll press down again and we're at position one. And when I hit down again, we'll, we loop. Okay, so the first two lines, they handle the looping function. They're, they're the things that indicate when we have a loop, when we've either reached the top or the bottom. That's the interesting event. The next thing I've got is logical three through logical six. And all I'm doing here is reading the value of GV1. And when GV1 is zero, I have L3 lit, that's position one. When GV1 reaches 10, I have L4 lit, that's position two. When GV1 reaches 20, L5 is lit, that's position three. And when GV1 equals 30, that's position four. That's controlled by L06. So real simple, as I move through the steps, there's position one, two, three, and four. And all that's doing is giving me an indicator what position I'm on. That's all the logical switch is doing. I'll show you how we use that in just a second. Okay, next up are special functions. And while there's a lot of information here, it's actually pretty simple. It's very easy to understand. The first special function is intended to reset the global variable that we're using in this model to zero every time we either turn the radio on or load up the model. So if I edit this one, you'll see that I have the switch one. That means one time we adjust GV1, which is the one that we're using for the loop and the counter. We're setting that to zero and we have a constant value of zero. 
All right, that's all that does. We also have another one for the counter on the main screen. I'll get to that in a little bit. The next thing that we have is special function number two. And what that says is anytime that five up is pressed, we're gonna adjust GV1 by 10. Now, the reason I used a value of 10 is because that's the old programmer in me coming out. Long time ago when I learned to program in basic, we used line numbers, we incremented by 10. And we did that so if we had to make adjustments later, we didn't have to rewrite everything. So that's kind of why I did it. You don't have to do it this way, but if you wanna follow my example, use 10. So whenever five up is pressed, we increment GV1 by a value of 10. On special function number three, it's the same thing, but it's the opposite. When five down is pressed, we adjust GV1 by a value of negative 10. We remove 10 from it. So GV1 obviously is the global variable we're using in this use case. Okay, so the first three special functions, they set our global variable to zero every time we power up the radio or fire up this model. Then we set up a trigger, so when five up is activated or five down is activated, we change our global variable by a value of 10. And then next up, we have special functions four and five. This is what actually creates the loop. Remember the function of logical one was to tell us when global variable one goes over a value of 30. So anytime GV1 goes above 30, L01 lights. Special function number four acts on that condition. So when logical one goes on, what happens is the global variable one is set to a value of zero. So what happens there is once you get up to a value of 30, the radio resets global variable one down to the very first position. Special function five does the same thing, but in reverse. So when you're clicking down or reducing the global variable down beyond zero, it goes back up to position number four. So if you're going from position four to three to two to one, and then you click down again, it goes all the way back around and loops it back to position number four. And it does that by setting the global variable one to a value of 30. Remember the positions we're using are zero, that's position one, 10, that's position number two, 20, that's position number three, and 30, that's position number four. So special functions four and five, they handle the actual looping action of the counter. Okay, we've got one last set of special functions, and this helps us display the value of the switch and calls out the position of the switch. And the way we'll do that, we have special function number nine, that resets the value on the screen. So if we go back here and you look at this one, GV2, I'm gonna go ahead and increment the counter to say we'll put it on position three. Position two, position three. There we go, so we're on position three. Now when I turn the radio off and turn it back on, special function number nine is the one that resets it back to zero which is position number one. Okay, so we have position number one, that's what does that, that's special function number nine. Okay, all that does is adjust GV2 to constant number one, that displays the value number one on the screen. Okay, next up, the rest of it is really simple. All we're doing is looking at our logical switches three, four, five, and six. So if you remember back on our logical switch screen, all these do is they go active when we're at zero, 10, 20, and 30, that's it. So logical three says when GV1 is at position one or zero, go active. When we're at position, position two. two, go active. Position three. When we're at position three, go active. Position four. And when we're at position four, go active. That's all they do, that's all the logical switch does. So now on the special functions, we take actions on those logical switches. So when logical three goes active, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust our global variable two to a value of one, that's position one, okay? And then the next thing we'll do is we'll play a track position one. If you want these audio tracks, I have position one through position six on my Discord server in the Emily requests channel on Discord. Okay, so that's it. Logical three goes out active. We set our position to number one and we play the track position one. And that's, the, well, that's all the rest of these do. When L04 goes active, it sets GV2 to a value of two or position two, and then it plays the position two track. Same thing with logical five and logical six. Okay, we've got one final step in order to complete this little configuration and we'll get there by hitting the model button and then we're gonna click on flight modes. And keep in mind, I'm using the newer version of the Edge TX graphics system. I'll show you what it looks like on the old version as well. But if you're using the LVGL based graphics, what you wanna do is in flight mode zero, click on setup and you wanna disable trims for T5. I do T T6 as well, but minimally turn off trims for T5. You just simply do that by pressing the button. And when you do that, it turns off T5 as a trim. And the reason we do that is because you don't wanna, as you're moving this, you don't want the uh, radio to go 
trim out of center, trim maximum, trim reach, trim zero, or the beeps. You don't want, really want that. So by turning it off in your flight mode, it no longer beeps at you or tells you you've reached the maximum or minimum trim. And on the older graphics version of Edge or the current production version, what we'll do is click on model, we'll go into flight modes, and you see over here on flight mode zero, this box right here, it's it, that's number five and that's number six. So what you want to do is click on there and, and use the double dash. And when, by doing that, you turn off T5s as a trim switch. So make sure you turn that off in flight modes because you really don't want to hear the beeps or the trim maximum or trim minimum. You just want to get rid of that. Now back on the main screen, if I press T5 down, you can see our position moves to number three. If I press T5 down, it goes to two and number one. And then if I do it one more time, it goes, it loops and goes back to four. There's four. And then if I press T5 up, it'll go up to four. And once I pass 30, remember 30 on the increment, it goes to number one. And then number two, number three, and number four. Okay, that covers the logic. Now, how do you use this in actual practical use? It's real simple. You simply look at the logical switch. So anytime logical three goes active, that's position one. Logical four is position two, five is position three, and six is position four. So all you have to do is take action based on the logical switch. Anytime those logical switches go active, you can use a special function to do whatever you want. Okay, now let me show you one more cool little trick, and that is to show you how we can change this from being a four position switch to a three position switch. It's real simple to do. All we have to do is go into our logical switch setup and where we have our step, we're gonna change it from 30 instead of 30, we're gonna change it to 20. So I've changed that one to 20, that's our first value. And then the next thing we need to do is on the special function side, we need to look at special function number five and change that to 20 as well. So we'll just go down here and reduce that by 10. Okay, after we adjust our top end on the special function SF5, then the last thing we need to do is go in and remove the audio tracks for the last position. So we're just gonna take those out. I'll click on this one and hit delete. And I'll click on this one and hit delete. And then when we go back to the main screen and we start cycling through, we should get the callouts position one, two, three, and then it'll loop. So here's position two, position two. and then three, three, and then back to one. one. There we go. That's simple to change from a four position to a three position. And if you wanna go the other way, you simply add the requisite lines going the other direction. It's that simple. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this little video on how to turn your trim switches into a multi-position switch using any number of positions you want. If you like this kind of content, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you know new videos hit the channel. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen.